Do you wanna know how I work 70 hours a week? Come on, let me show you how I've optimized my time. Okay, here's my secret. Sleep five hours a night. Eat dinner while I'm taking a shower. And I've stopped hanging out with my friends because they are so fun and fun is distracting. I'm just kidding. That's not actually what my day looks like. I don't actually work 70 hours anymore. So here's the truth about productivity. It's really not about the apps. It's not about having a perfect system, being disciplined or motivated more than anybody else. Don't get me wrong, those things do help. There's a hidden secret to productivity. So grab your favorite drink and let's talk about it. I'm working on my next book, The Profitable Shift, and what I've been thinking about really hard is what it really comes down to. It really does come down to mindset and what are you willing to shift? So think about it. When you're doing the things that you actually love doing, you're probably the most productive without even trying because you actually love doing it. When you're doing something that you love, you don't need motivation to motivate you to go do that thing. You actually are excited about doing that thing because you love doing it already. As humans, we are terrible at motivating ourselves to doing things that we just hate doing. So the question is, how can you motivate yourself to be more productive? Yes, you can read more books or listen to more books or buy more courses, but at the end of the day, if you don't have the mindset to make that shift, it's never going to happen. So the first thing to do is sit down and list out your priorities and list out everything that you do in a day, in a week, in a month, and list out those things that you have to do, the things you want to do, and the things that you wish would just go away. This helps you set priorities. And this will empower you to actually say no when someone asks you to do something and you just don't wanna do it. So if you're putting things on your calendar that you actually love, you don't need that motivation to go be productive. It's when you fill your calendar and fill your time with a bunch of things that you don't wanna do and you're not gonna be motivated to be the most productive that you can be. Now we all do things that we just don't care to do. That's just life. If you can fill your calendar doing things that you actually love doing and do it at that blocked time, when it comes time to having fun with friends or family, you can actually be present rather than feeling like you're on this hamster wheel and you constantly have to have your phone in your face 24 seven. I used to feel that way, not anymore. So when I think about my own schedule and my own life being a productivity consultant, podcast host, an event planner, a designer, traveling the world, speaking, being an author, working on another book, and being a digital marketer and running an agency. I think about the things, what do I love doing? And those are the things that I focus on. None of it feels like a hustle because I love everything that I'm doing. Creating content, making videos, answering questions, teaching and guiding people how to be more productive, that brings me joy. And you know the saying, when you love what you do, it doesn't feel like work. And there's a lot of books and a lot of podcasts and courses out there that will tell you, go find your passion and do what you love. But the challenge is, what if you don't know what you're passionate about? What if you're in a job or doing something every day that you're okay with it, but you don't know if you actually love it? And usually it's those things that you're doing for fun, that you're volunteering, you're planning parties. That's how it started with me. You were just naturally good at something and you love doing it for a hobby. And if you have no clue, I challenge you to go out and try some new things and see what you love and more importantly, what you don't love. So you know what you should not be spending your time doing. Now, just because you love doing something doesn't mean that you can make money doing it or there are people in the world that you're solving their problem and you're going to make money from it. So be realistic. Now I completely realize that you can't just go quit your job and support yourself or your family. So consider your mindset. I heard this quote the other day on TikTok. If you're doing something, you can learn to enjoy it. So the question is, how do you learn to enjoy something that you have to do? or something that you're already doing. It's funny because I actually can tell that I annoy people sometimes when I talk about productivity, and now I know why people are so annoyed by me cheering, GSD, GSD, which in my world is get shit done. It's because they're doing shit that they don't like to do. It has no meaning, it has no purpose. So here's four tips, four, for you to consider to be more productive. Number one is your mindset and really shifting your mindset 
and how you're showing up and how you're doing things. How are you responding to other people? How are you taking on new projects? Shifting your mind into positive energy matters. When I used to work in the mental hospital because I went to school to be a psychologist, when something bad happens to me or in my business or my family, I always think back to some of my patients and I know that it could be way, way worse. Someone always has it way worse than you do. So even if you have a job or you're doing things that you don't like to do, either change what you're doing, make a shift, or find a way to really enjoy what you're doing and have fun with it. Number two, turn things into a game. That's why I color code everything. I love sketching and designing and doodling. So having different colored pencils and markers when I'm drawing out strategies, even for clients, it just makes it a little bit more fun. Even with accounting and my P&L, my profit and loss statement, my accountant color codes everything because she knows that I really hate numbers. Now, I don't hate making money for the company and providing a living for lots and lots of people as well as providing opportunities for other people to help them have a wonderful life as well. The third thing is to do it with people you like. Surround yourself with people that will help bring you up and lift you up and whatever you're doing, it's much more fun when you have a team, depending on your personality. Now, if you're an introvert, you may work best alone and that's okay too. Now, I know for some of us, we can't pick who we work with. Even in my companies, we specifically have an intern program and then hire people from that intern program based on a very specific personality, which most importantly, they're not like me. They don't think like me which challenges me to be a better leader. Some people think that this is frustrating or annoying. I look at it from a completely different lens. Don't get defensive, don't get aggravated. It's an opportunity for growth. And if you stop growing, aren't you just bored? So surround yourself with the right people. The fourth thing to consider is your environment. Now I'm a little bit of a neat freak and a tad bit OCD. So if I'm surrounded by papers and post-it notes and clutter, I can't think straight. So I have my workflow set up where I have multiple desks at my home. I have a treadmill stand-up desk. So if my back starts hurting, I can stand up, get some steps in and actually work. I love being with my dog and she loves being with me too. Now we all work differently. So really think about and ask yourself, what is that perfect environment that is going to make you thrive? And the bigger question here, are you doing the right things? How are you spending your time? Because I know that time is precious. It's priceless. You can never buy it back. So if you're spending your time doing something that you don't like doing, this is your permission to stop or look for something else. You know the saying, if you want a different result, you've got to do something different. Figure out what's meaningful to you. What's been meaningful to me, especially after my dad got sick and passed away, is to be present, be present with my family. They're not going to be there forever. And if you like this video, be sure you're a subscriber and check out my next video on how you can be the most productive you can be. And thank you for your time because time is precious and you can never get it back. So go out there, find your passion, do what you love, and GSD. Let's get shit done. Mm -hmm.